What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Games Recap. Yeah, let's recap some games and game news that happened over the weekend while you guys were out having fun and doing normal people stuff. Exactly. So uh, first up, let's talk about this little story I've heard mm. uh, while I switch on the lights. So let's go over there. So uh, Tim Sweeney, okay. you know, with all the exclusives they're snatching up over at Epic, right, are, uh, are trying to explain themselves because gamers... I guess mostly gamers are upset. Okay. Uh, 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 when are we not upset? I guess. <laughs> it's the, get, you know, that, that's a silly joke. I'm making fun of our own people. Yeah, but well, it's, it's true. true. It's, it's true. true. Yeah. 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 Right, we, got, we got some lights in. We're good to go. All right. I'm going to bring it back to right, tag team camera. Fan up for, for Larry. Uh, but uh, this is huge news because obviously developers are, are loving the fact that they have a, a, a place to kind of relax and keep their mm. extra 20% mm. profits, yeah. right? As you guys may or may not know, Steam takes 30%. They mm. set the rules and standards that Apple kind of adopted and kind of yeah. everybody adopted, industry Everyone. standards, right? It became the, yeah. Yeah, the monopoly of uh, online digital game stores. And for a very long time until Epic came around and said, F that, mm. uh, what was it, 13%? Around 10%, yeah, basically. I think so. I think it was, yeah. Yes, and they even do a, a do more of a solid where anybody that develops on Unreal, uh, that five percent royalty gets slided in a part of that ten percent. So yeah. you're you're really saving a lot of money. So yeah. there really isn't uh, a a con to actually go to the Epic Store if you get tapped on the shoulders by them. The only yeah. thing is that you have to be tapped on the shoulder by them. You can't yeah. just apply. Right? It's it's not like an open gate. Not yet. There's no green light process yet. <laughs> exactly. Oh, so. I was voted by the fans, and so here we are on the Epic Game Store. Uh, just reach out, send them an email, send them a demo, and see how it goes after that. Exactly. So uh, let's look at this article that I pulled up here. Right. Um, switching over. The Donkey Kong mallet. Yeah. No, right. <laughs> this is a great article by the Kotaku crew. Let's give them credit. This is actually our next story. But this is a WCCF Tech, right? Wrote this and caught up with Tim Sweeney, and he talks about a lot of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, in this article, he kind of detailed his his thoughts, okay. right, on how everyone's pretty much upset with them, but at the same time, you know, he threw the gauntlet weeks ago, saying that, hey, if you guys have a problem with it, do better, do better, <laughs> and then as you match, we'll stop kind of snatching up aggressively at these mm -hmm. exclusives. And Larry, you, you mentioned like your thoughts on this. Like last Friday, where yeah. you're like, "Hey, it's an open field. It's only going to help us." Yeah, I think, and I can reiterate in like a minute. Uh, I think, sure, as a consumer, we may not like the inconvenience of having an additional place to go and manage and buy or experience content from, like another channel, another pipeline. Uh, because you know, the more people that do that, the more fragmented, or the more I'm going to have to stay on my toes. Like, okay, what games are Origin? What games are Steam? What games are Epic Game Store? What games are Discord Store? What games are so, yeah, that's probably going to be a, a real crappy experience. But on the business end, the more that people are competing for your dollar, the stronger the value of your dollar is because people can't extort you for it because you will leave, jump ship, and go for a cheaper or more valuable opportunity. Uh, that's just what's great about competition. You know, the reason why Coke is its price is because Pepsi tries to undercut them. So then Coke tries to, they stay competitive. They're always doing something to try to win you as a customer. You know, they're trying to put their best foot forward mm -hmm. versus if you're the only gig in town, you can name your price. You can have an attitude. You can have an ego. You don't have to do, you don't have to do jack squat because it's like either you buy it from us or you don't have it in your life whatsoever. So the more competition, actually, the better it is for your dollar. Mm -hmm. May not be better for your convenience, but the better it is for your dollar. Yeah, I mean, and then people are complaining about the issues that you understand, mm -hmm. right? Steam took a while for it to become the Steam that we know and love right now. It took a while for them to get the infrastructure, the friends list, all mm -hmm. this stuff working. Of course, Epic is suffering the same thing. They have, they're really light on the features, right? Aside from maybe downloading, installing, and there's yeah. really not much there. Uh, but, I mean, he responded to a lot of these issues uh saying that yeah we do have problems but i mean this is the beginning of every every type of new business yeah. right uh bear with us and people are upset with them with the aggressiveness but they have to be like that for them to be competitive I, why i mean put yourself in the consumer's mind not necessarily saying you personally but can you identify 
why they would be upset. Like, what yeah. is the upsetting thing if it's not just a small inconvenience issue? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If that's the only thing, like, oh, man, I'm going to have a hard time patting you on the back saying yeah. they're there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know I mean, mean, Epic, we're not going to... They're not like any other place where if you buy your digital game, it's going to get lost if they go out of business. They're not yeah. going to go out of business. Yeah. So your games are going to be there safely. Maybe the inconvenience, like you said, is uh, for some reason... I can't imagine a network issue where you can't reach your games. Mm -hmm. They have the infrastructure with Fortnite. They know how to kind of serve mm -hmm. server issues. Uh, so the cool thing that I like what Epic is doing is they're very open and free about their sales figures. Um, obviously, if it's good numbers, they yeah. want to just tout that and kind of attract developers. Yeah. But at the same time, justify to gamers is like, this is the platform here to stay. Uh, a lot of the things that they talked about, let's see here, uh, to quote on the comment, uh, Epic probably bought up a lot of these coffee. <laughs> this is just straight up hate. The snark. Yeah, so this Epic probably bought up these coffees to mislead people into thinking their store is working out well. Uh, yeah, come on, man. That's not how business works. This, this isn't the music industry. Yeah, but <laughs> there's a lot of like is straight up. The cool thing about Tim Sweeney is that you tweet at him, he'll tweet back if it's like worth responding to. So this guy's like, by the way, the offer wasn't made. Uh, then a simple no would be easy to say. If no one's tied by anything, then so. It doesn't sound like a denial. Snoke says hi, and you're reported on Steam also. And Tim Swing responded, when we're partners announced copies sold, these numbers always reflect actual copies of the games to Epic Game Store customers. When we provide funding developers or publishers, uh, sure, that does not affect the calculation of copies sold. Ooh, burn <laughs> this is facts i mean people there's like nothing yeah. shows your ignorance more when somebody rebuts you with just truth yeah you know what i mean like there's no insults there's no name calling it's just truth that that just burns worse than any like joke because at least a joke is like oh there's embellishment there's it's comedy right someone just being like okay look one plus one equals two you don't even understand that. exactly Done. Yeah. It's <laughs> Next topic, which is the whole Kickstarter kerfuffle, yeah. right? Yeah. A lot of these exclusives have a backing uh, crowdfunding history with mm -hmm. them. Shenmue 3, like we talked yeah. about last week, was one of the biggest recent ones. Uh, so, of course, one of the issues are talking about what be about these time exclusives of these backed games yeah. by, by people, right? You're kind of shitting on all those early adopters. Well, you know who I actually would blame is I would blame the person making the game, right? Exactly. Because they're the ones who made the promise of if you give yeah. us 40 bucks, we'll make sure you get a free copy. Exactly. They're the ones who then say like, hey, we have this cool deal with the Epic Game Store. Will we still be able to fulfill all our promises? Mm -hmm. If the answer is no but money, I'm mad at the company that took the deal. I'm not mad at the Epic Game Store. Yes. Uh, so obviously that, that, that uh, required a response. Um, let's say the... Uh, <laughs> So the tweets and the backers are always tweeting at Twim Sweeney, why are you doing this to us, mm. you motherfucker? Uh, he responds, like, well, the Kickstarter situation is tricky because as best we can understand the Valve policy, the only way the developers can make Steam keys available to backers is they offer their game for sale public to everyone on Steam with the store taking 30%. Did you know about this? Say it one more time. So the only way that people can prom be promised uh, Steam keys is mm. that they opt in into the sales. Uh, you know, the famous Steam yeah. sales, which is, can be up to 50 80%, mm -hmm. and still be uh, taking 30% of those. Well, I mean, that's a clear. <laughs> Fuck you. Like, you're not helping anybody. Yeah, so clearly Steam... 30% is a huge chunk. Steam right? isn't a big fan of, you paid $40 in development fees, you should get a free copy of the game because you're using our platform to help transition the yes. data to the person that is getting yes. the copy. Yes. So Steam's like, we weren't involved in getting that 40 bucks, but yes. you want to use our service. Right. I, actually, I can understand why there's still a fee, at least on the Steam side, yes. right? Because that's just, that's just, just the regular business, right? Fee, you're yeah. using my platform. This I'm is storing was, the game. Yeah. They're coming in and supposedly getting a free copy somehow, yeah. some way from a deal that you set up that I wasn't part of whatsoever. Right. I can understand Steam's side of that. Yeah. So I, I still go back to the developer. Like, <laughs> don't go making promises yeah. if you're going to be on Steam or the Epic Game Store. <laughs> I mean, that's some fighting words, though. Like... Yeah. Um, at any point, you can tell Steam that, uh, you know, just throw that 30%. Mm. And it just instantly makes Valve a bad guy, mm. right? They were supposed to be in the developer's camp. 
they were at the beginning creating a platform to fight the, mm-hmm. the, the, the monopoly the physical stores have. But somehow they became the monopoly on the digital yep. front because everything went digitized. They, they provided the most convenience. Yes. Right? Like prior to Steam, it was go to Babbage's, EB Games, Funko exactly. Land or wherever and buy your boxed copy. Mm-hmm. Amazon wasn't a thing at the time, right? Before big time Steam shows up. So yeah. you went and bought your boxed copy. Steam shows up. I was like, hey, just buy it digitally and we'll keep it all organized library for you. Awesome. Great. Yeah. So I see their, their convenience as to why they have a lot of people tied to it. Yeah. But like when I want to change websites, I'm not mad that if I'm on Polygon and I want to go to Kotaku, it's just not already there. Right. It it takes an extra minute to like change the website and go find new articles. Mm-hmm. I still can't believe that, that it's people such have a, a lot pain of issues with it. To double yeah. click a different icon, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, it is hard to kind of argue me. for the people who don't want to install yeah. an extra thing. But we are in a period where we're constantly being asked by these publishers to download their platforms yeah. to play the game that they want. Yeah. I mean, we're divided between let's say the three, the four biggest ones, which is Steam, Epic Game Store mm-hmm. now, uh, or uh, I can't believe Origin's still in the conversation. <laughs> they and, make a lot of games. Yes, and, and then, of course, games. Battle.net, right? Yeah. Blizzard's games. I mean, those are th- probably the big four, and then yeah. you play in yeah. the eighth place. There's nothing in between. They're just in the eighth you place. You play because you're the yeah, only person. Yeah, you go stand over in that corner, on guys. That <laughs> you know what I think? You're the only one playing. That's what they should be. (laughs) You know who can step in and save the situation, actually, for all the people involved in any sort of Kickstarter campaign is Kickstarter themselves, right? If they could make it easier for digital distribution through the Kickstarter platform, because that's where the transaction is happening. So that's where the delivery should happen, especially if it's digital. Like, hey, we're going to put this EXE file in a folder. Mm -hmm. And all the people who purchase this tier will be able to download this EXE file Three times, yeah. one time, whoever, yeah. whatever, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done. Done. You paid me your forty bucks. We made the game, even though the game is on Steam, on Steam or on Epic Store for public mm-hmm. consumption. Because you are a backer, you go to this link on Kickstarter, and there's your free copy. Yeah. It doesn't exist in Steam though. It's like a install, like the old school way, yeah. on your computer solo through no launcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm completing the deal. I yeah. gave you a full, a free copy of the game for your forty, uh, a full copy of the game for your forty bucks mm-hmm. through Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. I think that would just solve the problem, and a lot of that angst would disappear too. No one's getting screwed anymore. The I gave you forty bucks, you made the game, but now I have to go to Steam, and yeah. Steam says I have to still buy it through the Epic Game Store. I've been yes. bamboozled. I wonder if because Kickstarter doesn't want to get into like the server business, or they're like already in hot waters with a lot of these projects, like. Going to empty folders, right? <laughs> so they're like, <laughs> they're like, they don't want, they want to be out this of the is, picture as soon as you just the JPEG. get their like 5%, yeah, commission fee and like, all right, get off our platform. Uh. Yeah, but they if they don't take an active stand in making sure that the customers their get... their website is getting less and less exactly. reliable. Exactly. Yeah, I think the public opinion with Kickstarter is half and half, yeah. or even less now. Right? Yeah. What, what's the what do you think the poll is? I will say this: Kickstarter for me actually already came and went. Okay. For me personally, I, I loved the idea of like seeing every man or average Joe coming up with a thing, wanting to make it a real thing, yeah. especially in tech or yeah. photography. I was yeah. seeing some great devices come yeah. through and I wanted to be a part of like making that a real thing. Right. It, it, it waned, it waxed and waned for me. Like, right. I don't even look, I don't even hear about Kickstarters. Yes. I don't even see good ones yes. anymore. So me personally, I'm yeah, not yes, uh, it has built such a bad rep. The 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 uh, coming in and being gone mm-hmm. effect is uh, too often. Yeah. That's why I think like other crowdfunding resources, either through your website yourself or Patreon, is a lot more reliable. Mm-hmm. It's like you're seeing the progress. You have some kind of repertoire yeah. with the developers. Um, yeah, I do like Patreon over Kickstarter. Like yeah, think about it. yeah. It, it just seems to make more sense where there is some kind of accountability on a monthly basis, and you know, you ha- it's just being in communication with yeah. the people you're backing up. So, I mean, this is just across the board, like what um, what everybody is having problems with. So, again, people are kind of gunning towards Epic solve Kickstarter problems, like bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like we're not Kickstarter. Yeah. See, this is where, in the case between this type of uh, these types of either the the big company, which is Epic, mm. 
And then I don't know why people, they're not even fighting for Steam, right? It's more like they're these fanboys are just upset yeah. at the circumstances. Think, yeah, people are upset. Yes. And, I'm upset. Um, but everyone's kind of gunning towards Epic to answer all the problems. Which it's, is, no, they're creating a competitor and they're doing what they need to do to be competitive. What's silly to me, and this might alienate some fans or upset some people, Yeah. but I feel like people don't even know how to be mad properly. You know what I mean? Like a bad thing happens, they don't get upset at the source. They get upset at the rich person they think should be responsible for fixing it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, because Epic is trying to make a competitor for Steam, I'm going to be mad at Epic for X, Y, and Z. Like, and like when I was explaining earlier that Epic was, they were not there when you guys did like a Kickstarter deal and promised free copies of your games to people who use Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Why are you mad at Epic for creating a platform for developers to sell games? Yes. Because people who didn't use Kickstarter want to sell their yes. games. People who paid for their own game completely and didn't take any funding want to sell their game yes there's way more customers that are going to take advantage of using the epic game store steam or any of those platforms that had nothing to do with a kickstarter campaign promise being unfulfilled right right so you got to know who to be mad at yes you know what i mean like yes. you, like align your anger <laughs> with the goal that you want to accomplish and find the person who's responsible right because that's where the leverage actually is right anyone else just doesn't care right and, and the article clearly points out like an, an issue that we've known about valve and steam they've always been secretive mm. you know steam spy was created by a third party to kind of look at the business of games and like and a lot of publishers and game developers look at that as a resource to like see if their genre is relevant or not and yeah. it is huge and yeah at, at some point man gabe and those guys over there just completely got out of touch mm -hmm. with their base and abandoned us yeah. in a way. They created the place and uh, decided to do a hands-off approach with yeah. their green light program. Everybody in and like, hey, let's just self-curate and just mm -hmm. enjoy our vacations and march in Hawaii from now on. You know what I mean? Like, there's no incentive for them to be in and yeah. they've shown no incentive to respond to yeah. what's going on. And they've never shown incentive of like, hey, we're, we're game developers ourselves, which is their strength, yeah. right? Yes, Epic really is, games. A game, you know, obviously make games. Mm -hmm. They make the engines as mm -hmm. well. But I would say that Valve and Steam is still, I think, overall, a better portfolio, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they, they come from a very deep place in the gamer's uh, hearts and yeah. game developers. They actually have both sides yeah. pretty well locked. I think a little ahead of Epic in terms of just their range of IPs. But oh, somehow sure. they just got so comfortable where they just completely never looked back or even addressed any of these issues and just continued with the 30%. And even to this point, I'm kind of upset that they never responded to anything. Like maybe they're just trying to avoid it. Well, here, here's that's actually a great segue for us to kind of reiterate the value of competition, right? For the longest time, Steam had no reason to change anything. They set it at 30% because they're like, okay, we feel like this is... Sure, whatever numbers they looked at behind the scenes, whatever you actually believe, I'm yeah. sure there's also profit built into that 30%. Oh, yeah. Right? It's not just this is how much it costs on average to run this service, so we're going to leave it at that. Yeah. There's still a number in there that helps them as a company just actually profit yeah uh and they had no one challenged them right yeah. there was no other show in town mm -hmm. that was like hey we're gonna do 25 percent or 20 percent right epic game store now is like no we're gonna do 12 percent or I, I really I, i'm sad that i forgot the number because it was such news the day that it came out i was like what yeah 12 percent yeah Are you kidding me that's a magic number man yeah. that's huge it's, that's a huge leap so yeah. now steam has to like actually do something because they're gonna do keep they though its... are they well it's been a I say while yes. i say yes i think i look okay. at it this way let's not look at it this year right let's look at the longer epic lives and thrives the bigger and badder of a force or a competitor they're going to become yeah. right they're already talking about 12 percent right which is undercutting what you offer at 30 percent significantly right? Right, right, right they're stealing exclusives from you they have the biggest game Fortnite, right now yeah that's all just this year, right? So, like, to look at Steam versus Epic right now, sure, you can say, oh, Steam doesn't have to do anything, yeah. right? But it's just like the Great Wall of China. Steam, or Epic Store is just going to continue to build, continue to grow, continue to build, continue to grow. And if it gets to the point where they're a formidable competitor and you've done nothing, that's, that's like Lamborghini or Ferrari creating their biggest rival, Lamborghini, by laughing at the guy who sold tractors, telling him how to make a better car. Mm -hmm. Guess now who pretty much has the market in supercar sales, I would imagine 
Lamborghini is probably smoking Ferrari. And this is, I'm imagining. But I'll tell you this. Yeah. How many more Ferraris would be sold if Lamborghini didn't exist? Yes. It's that. It's, yes. You got to look at the long term. Yes. So the long term is like uh, very important for game developers, gamers. Now we actually have a formidable opponent. Mm-hmm. You know, Activision's going to always have their battle net, but they're always going to be pumping out Blizzard games. Yeah. It's exclusive for that. It's, Same with other publishers. They're always going to go for their own games. Yeah. That's why they created the platform. Yeah. Steam and Epic are the only ones that are actually inviting anybody else to play along. Yeah. And uh, that's a huge step forward for us. And it's going to create a competitive field. And I'm still waiting mm-hmm. on a reply from Steam, uh, from Valve. Like, what are they doing? Like, they have to be talking about this. Are do they you, just not worried? Do you think that uh, Steam should match the 12% or get more competitive? At the very least. Yeah. At the very least. And they, I think they need to uh, step up. Mm-hmm. You know, I think they're in a better position to still say that they're the underdogs mm-hmm. out of two of them, right? Because they are. Mm-hmm. I think Epic is worth more as a company, maybe. That's actually that's interesting. They're both I, private, I don't know. right? I, I don't know where yet because I know that Epic's huge influx of cash has been within it's like, like so. a year. You know what I mean? Like yeah. within a twelve month cycle, have they really been to like, oh my god, two hundred million, three hundred million? Whereas we're talking Valve who has just run a server <laughs> and, a, and a hard drive farm, you know what I mean, for the last 15 years, and they've made like two games, you know what I mean? They've spent two games worth of finance okay. and have just raked in money. Right. So I don't know who actually, I don't know value-wise who wins that fight. This is, the power is, there way, is there a way we can? Well, I'm, I'm looking at this, and I just like a company worth. They're, Forbes estimated them to be at 1.7. I don't know how, how uh, is this in the 2000s? Epic is... Estimated at 1.7? Right. Okay, yeah, I was about to say this. <laughs> they did that in that. the last 365. Yeah. They're giving away money now. Is there 8 billion? Yeah, I've heard about this before. Okay. This sounds about right. 8, 8 billion. billion. Falling Fortnite success. Uh, let's look at Valve. Valve Steam net worth. Gabe himself is probably worth more than Epic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's at least $2 billion. Uh, and that's Steam. Anyway, so we're we're trying to pull up some facts on the side, and let's see if we can get any sort of reasonable evaluation. Uh, Wikipedia. Uh, we're an estimated four point. All right, I mean that's something right there. Really? Dang. They earned four point three billion dollars in twenty seventeen. Oh, they earned just that much in twenty seventeen. They earned. Yeah. So I oh, don't yeah. know their okay, network. So, I'm not right. seeing anything. All right. And then Gabe himself is four billion dollars. Yeah, so He's just in that there. one year, they earned four billion dollars. Yeah. All right. I'm I'm still betting that Steam is more valuable than Epic. Well, it's valuable in a way where, uh, or they they've brought in more revenue. I don't know their costs, but I don't imagine that we're sitting over here spending four point one billion and they made four point three. You know what I mean? Right. It's a. Uh, you got to remember, Steam is still very small. Yeah. And they've been keeping very small. We're talking about sub maybe 250 How much do you people. think they spend in salaries in a year? <laughs> Not as much as that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, they are one of the few game companies can afford not making a game mm. or a hit. Mm. And in the last five years, dude, yeah. when was the last game they made? Portal 2? Uh, Artifact, Artifact, the Dota Underlords. Dota 2, maybe? Those are like... <laughs> like fun projects, right? They never the f- really realized it, it, it wasn't like on the okay high caliber of where like sure. Portal Two and Left 4 Dead was, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Where they actually put a marketing push behind it. it They're just like, yeah, we'll just release this because it's fun. Yeah. Oh, it's making some money. Uh, I mean, they have Dota, mm. obviously Team Fortress. Everything is monetized. Even uh, CS:GO now is mm. uh, free. So. They're they're around mm-hmm. in terms of a game business, but yeah, there's they, no it's minimal it's, to to them collecting a thirty percent on every game that's being sold. If you're a billionaire, right, and you He's walk, bored, dude. No, I'm just saying. Let's yeah. say you specifically were a billionaire, yeah. and you walk by a guy doing the like find the queen with three cards, and he's yeah. like, pay five bucks and you can win twenty. Yeah. Are you interested in that? No. Exactly. Yeah. That's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem, I mean? and it shows, and it shows, and yeah, it starts yeah. from the very top. I think Gabe is just. It's been known for years that he's completely disinterested yeah. in games. He would yeah. not even um, uh, invest in any game projects anymore. Yeah. I mean, he made it publicly known that game business is horrible. <laughs> like, it's, the, the gamble is too high. I've always said, <laughs> if you had $100 million to start a game company, 
right? Yeah. You may as well set it on fire. <laughs> yeah. Because you'll get rid of it faster and have more of a show. Exactly. I feel bad saying that, but that's mainly because it's true. I stand on that for a couple of things. Yeah. The amount of competition, mm. both in the development space, but also in the marketing space. Mm. I think that it's going to take a lot of great ideas, a lot of great talent, and a lot of great execution, and an incredible marketing strategy in order to be successful in game development right now. Mm -hmm. So the more of those risks you can mitigate, the more I'll say you have a better shot. Yeah. But it's it's hard for me to look at investing in a game company right now, me personally. Yeah. So I, I don't mean to dissuade anybody who's like, hey, Larry, well, fuck you, because I just I we just took make, out a loan and I, want I, want I want to start a studio. No, it's what I'm saying is I'm just being besides real. our game. There's no game out there worth investing. But, but even how we're doing it is different, <laughs> yeah, right? Like no. we're just gonna be completely honest right now. Yeah. Started a podcast, helping mm -hmm. to build an audience. Yeah. You gotta shows, build other to things build an audience. to make it happen. Yeah. We're trying to do marketing and customer yeah. acquisition simultaneously. Yeah, the the business of just making the game and going yeah. in your cave and coming out with a game finish is long gone. Yeah, you can't build a business that way yeah, you and that it is it's a business you can't think of a game it's just a game anymore the game industry right now is very pay to win yes and that's the best way i can describe it if you're not willing to show up with big bank to yes. tell a bunch of people about your product yes. and you can handle that first one not being successful and you have two three more tries in the bank if you don't have that scenario yes. set up for you good luck yes and that's all i'm saying good luck. right now there's a huge limitation a lot of gates for game developers to get their games made but also get sold mm -hmm. and if you're looking and approaching two camps yeah. the steam camp and the epic camp epic is doing a way better job yeah. uh giving you a better royalty cut but also uh doing what they can in the marketing front and a lot of back end stuff that mm -hmm. steam isn't right yeah. they're all they offer is a, a, a platform a and that's it and which is very disappointing like uh i grew up playing steam games mm. so have you um even with all these issues they still are special mm. developers to me but they just went completely dark on us completely ghosted on us and uh it's it's very disappointing and disheartening yeah. it's like how can you root for guys especially when they're so silent right now mm. it's like now we're just forming opinions for them and that's when it gets dangerous it's like if you guys are trying to go ipo which they have to be right who knows? Actually, that's a, actually that's a tough one. Well, well let's unpack that later because I don't want right. to interrupt your point. Okay, yeah, but yeah. like, if that's what they're going for, it's the community that builds your company up, which has built their company up. They go to Steam because of the loyalty and because of what Steam represents to them. If you wash that out, they're totally gonna be worth less and less, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. It's there. already less. And less in the last two years because they haven't innovated or responded to any of the competition. Yeah. And it's going to go that way even they more. They added trading cards. Yeah, I know, right? The thing is, is like they used to be able to kind of pump out these games yeah. and uh, serve all of their bases, mm -hmm. right? I grew up on first-person shooter. I still love first-person shooter. They haven't built anything for me, man. Yeah. They make these card games for you guys. It's like, what the fuck, Val? <laughs> it's like, you guys were... You found Half-Life. You know, you re reinvented that they, genre, and you have done nothing. Uh, give me Portal. Fine. It's a good game. But I want to shoot things, right? you shooting Portal, right? Don't but that's what I feel like, man. They're abandoning yeah. everyone that has propped them up. And Gabe is just enjoying here's, his two homes. Here's an unpopular opinion. Yeah. The clam the fan clamoring for a Half Life three yeah. is far greater than what they believe they could possibly build to satisfy. In yeah. the age of review bombs, yeah. in the age of one streamer playing a single player game and giving it away to the whole audience yeah. with how many people would be interested in Half Life Three, perhaps they're looking at it as a significantly losing prep proposition where at most we're gonna tarnish the brand even if we yes. do our best. Yes. How do you feel about that? Because like maybe Again, maybe. This is a stretch, but maybe it's one of those, like, we're fighting uphill no matter what we do because too many people want this game to exist. Even if we make it, are we going to satisfy the audience? Even if we put our best effort into this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it then not just going to get ruined? Because Half-Life is, I mean, very linear storytelling, single-player experience. Oh, my God, Ninja did a full playthrough of Half-Life 3. Yeah. 80 million people now just saw the whole well, thing. Well, Steam I mean? used to be the innovators, right? Half-Life 2 mm -hmm. was infinitely better than Half-Life 1. Oh, I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah and every level too. was built around a mechanic that they uh, wanted to build up, and mm -hmm. they had a classical way of building up the game to make it satisfying in the yeah. end. Half-Life 3 is no different. Yeah. Anything 
like the world uh, can be still used. Yes, they have to innovate on the mechanic. They have to innovate the storytelling. But they are in the best position to do so. Mm-hmm. The respect that I had for that development team is gone, had. man. <laughs> I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> like, I love yeah. anybody at Valve. You're obviously really good, mm-hmm. right? But what have you done for me lately? <laughs> but, like, it's serious. Like, I can't. It's not a place where you grow. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't feel like. It feels like a place where you die as a developer because you're not pumping out games it's and you can't yeah i mean you can't get better by not shipping games unfortunately that's the business it's like to be competitive but they're so relaxed over there from the developer side but also if their whole thing is about serving steam client they're not doing that either so what the fuck are you doing it's really but interesting it's automatic by this point right if it, it feels like a young retirement home in a sense it right? is because what i hear is your desk is on wheels and it's plugged yes. into itself you can just roll it right next to whoever you want to work sure. with. sure collaborate. like so it's like you've got these people active doing stuff but what in the grand that's scheme, the most active they do they wheel exactly. their chair around exactly and uh what are you eating for lunch? It's like, it's that, like, well, that place is a joke to me. Like, I wouldn't want to go there. My, my opinion of that place is different. It used to be my dream place to work at. Mm-hmm. But the last five to eight years, all I hear about is, like, projects getting canceled yeah, or, or, or just people unsatisfied yeah. because it gets super political there because there's a lot of old guards there. Yeah. And with their success, it's like, how can you argue? It's like, what, did, what are you doing? Why are you making a game? We make way more money every day from selling other people's games yeah. and it becomes less and less motivating to be creative that's why i feel like with the team that they bought mm-hmm. with firewatch i have high well, doubts that game is going to come out and oh. you guys can quote me on that Wait, what's, if it does come out valley of the gods is valley that of the gods. Th- oh that game's coming out yeah that sure coming out. sure but can you argue with me that i'll say this that team is not being pulled apart Onto other projects and other needs. I will say this: I think Their that game is going to finish, yes. right? It's going to finish. But that game didn't start at Valve. Well, that well, Mark, they, Valve yeah, mark my words: they're not going to make another game after oh, that. That team right there will not make oh, another game. That hurts. I hope not. I, Look at them. No, I mean, I hope that you're incorrect. Is what I'm saying. Not, I hope they don't make another game. Yes, I know. But yeah, look yeah. at that company, man. Yeah, Every yeah. game that they came out with, a they good bought. amount of them have been bought. Yeah. And internally developed and then never followed up again. <laughs> they get pulled apart with other priorities. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know if their decision to make a VR. Have you seen that VR set that they made? I saw a picture of it. The I, index? I was uninspired. And well, I, didn't, it's like I didn't look at any VR. The industry is moving away from wires. And yes, they're trying to market towards the hardcore. Mm-hmm. But that's how irrelevant they are now. It's like, dude. Everybody is eye candy about the no wires. Mm. They want less horsepower. And why are you coming out with this? Yes, maybe it's a little better. But is that enough? You well, guys used to be fucking Valve, man. You can't be late to the party and just a little better. Yeah, That's where's the, the bodysuit? Where's 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 like to, the innov- where's the next yeah. step of Valve interaction? Where's the you know they used to do the heartbeat pulse meter with yeah. it like measures your like heart rate and then it pumps up in Left for Dead. The zombie horde, you know, like, oh, wow, that's very Valve like. Never came out, right? But, like, sure, they might be working on crazy things there, but as a gamer, I'm not interested in anymore. As a game developer, it being a platform to go to, it's the last place you want to go to yeah. now. You're looking at all the other options. So, you had mentioned earlier, um, do we think like Valve wanting to go IPO or like that yeah. that's what they should be doing? I think they're in a very unique position. Right, because usually when I think of companies going IPO, they're small team or even a big team. They have this grand idea yeah. that without like a significant increase in funding, it's going to be very difficult or very time consuming for them, or not time consuming. The amount of time it will take to bring to fruition, yeah. versus hey, you know what? Let's sell forty percent and let's get three billion, and then we can make this a product next year. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Valve is like, what need do they have of money? Like, where is financing stopping That's what I them mean. from anything? They're, they've been number one for a long time. And yeah. like anything, any sport, any industry, when you're number one, you become yeah. comfortable so, and stop being competitive and you become irrelevant. I mean, so, that's where they were coming. Like Valve and Steam, like three years or, or four years ago, yeah. was a megalith. Everybody wanted a piece of it. Yeah. Right now, 
Not so much. If they try to sell it to anybody, sure. There might well, be some bids, but it's not as interesting. Here's anymore. my big boom. I think, and I'm, I'm ignorant to all the facts behind the scenes at Valve, so mm-hmm. I could be completely wrong. Yeah. I'm still going to make this statement. I think the only person who benefits from Valve going public is Gabe himself. Yeah. That's his like, okay, sold the company, give me a career ending payday, and then I'll just ride off into the sunset. Yeah. I don't see any other benefit where having more people own that company or just giving Valve like a huge cash influx is going to change anything that they don't already have complete control over or could just do themselves. Yes. I think Valve having more owners will make them make games. They're probably going to be shittier than we expect out of Valve. Yeah. They're just going to really um, yeah, I, I don't, yeah, so prostitute all the IPs. Yeah. In my mind, based on what I know and understand of Valve right now, I think if they went public, it's because Gabe was ready to call it quits. I think they're on. That's the only thing they're doing yeah. in the background, right? Besides making like shitty VR sets. I'm sure it's good. <laughs> I'm sure it's like top notch, yeah, yeah. but it's too niche and too hardcore. And it's again them not paying attention to what's they're not being competitive. It's like, are is your goal is to sell these, right? Or is your goal is just to make them just to pump up your like? I feel like everything they're doing is yeah. trying to prepare themselves to be attracted, attracted to uh, attractive to uh, investors and capital investment to buy and go public, right? Who could even afford Valve? That's Microsoft like, that's is down question. the street. Yeah, that would be the best buy. Apple, if they really want to get into this game business, yeah, like after they figure out the Apple Arcade doesn't work, <laughs> Valve made four billion in one year, right? Yeah, I mean so they like, still obviously make a lot of money, and they have that strong branding behind yeah. them, and Epic constantly talks about them. Yeah, I, so they're always relevant. Man, if if I own Valve, I would not sell it for anything less than like ninety billion dollars. But that's, but I, the truth is, these if guys I can make made four so much in a money, year, you know what I mean? Yes, but they made so much money, but yeah. they just want to be out of the game. I'm sure at this point, he doesn't want to think about yeah. the day to day activities and yeah. going to their studio. Like Gabe doesn't want to like try to pretend that everyone's making games still. You know, like that conversation keeps happening and. Yeah. It used to be a place that's never shipped, right? Where they always delay their game. Now it's like completely not even about delay. It's like don't even it's, talk about it. You go to Valve as a developer. You have a great job. You're working with really creative people. And you're just like getting paid to just experiment on ideas, it seems like. And I only say that because we haven't seen anything come to fruition. I'm actually sad that they have a VR headset coming out, knowing that they like fired the female evangelist who was like, I don't want to call her it. evangelist. I, she was a developer, but I mean, yeah. she was like the one yeah. who was like, this is what we need to do. Yeah. This is, and this is from the outside perspective. Again, yeah. I always caveat when I say this kind of things, because I'm not there to see yes. the real conversations or the real input or the real value of her work or Valve's work or their right, understandings right, right. or ability to work together. But from an outsider, it seemed like they had somebody who was like, this is what we In need to do. It, yeah. Super excited about it, bringing good tech, creating stuff, and then got fired. Yeah. And... And she what? went on to right? like uh, Magic the Leap or something, yeah. or what was ever, ever that story. It, it just seems like a place where they just don't have a company drive, or at least like enough to kind of align with everyone's little experiments and mm-hmm. be like, this is what we're going to do the next five years. It's too loosey-goosey, yeah. man. I don't know. It's, it's not uh, a place it's, that it's, I it's an incredible, anymore. an incredible business model. Like they're so successful that they can just do whatever. Yeah. Like honestly, Good like God. I love Firewatch. Yeah. I feel like it's one of those um, blossoming small companies that very rarely became a huge hit. Right. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they had. They're not like truly indie. They did yeah. have publisher money, but it was like a small team was yeah. able to be globalized and market and and champion that side. When they got bought out by Valve, it used to be a celebration. Oh, shit, Valve. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. When I heard that news, oh, shit, they're never going to make another game after this. <laughs> That's really yeah, the yeah. story, hear, right? They're going to get fatter and more comfortable, sure, as a developer, safer, which I'm always you know, happy mm-hmm. for. Developers need like a safe place. But what was that buy for? Like, I don't understand that move. Like, yeah, is they, it for them to really get back into the game? They they bought a good set of storytellers, for sure. I, I, I will definitely give that that studio credit for But they're great probably taking those developers to work on the other projects. Let's be honest. Like, when you work in a studio that has multiple projects, mm-hmm. you're never going to be 
working on the game that you got pulled in for it. Yeah, you three you, six you months in, you're like, oh my god, these other games are on yeah. fire. Yeah, you have the skill set. Can you go work on this for another three months? Hey, this game's UI is below. Yeah, you, and you this is, and that's just constantly the the cycle. That's the new work experience. Yeah, yeah. like it's 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 it was really shitty. Because as a developer, it's the one thing that we always argue for. You don't really have a choice. Okay. And I go in there. I'm like, I didn't, you know, it's a two-way street, right? I interviewed for this job, mm-hmm. for this game, because I want to work on that game. You're mm-hmm. telling me, and you have no choice. I feel that's kind of wrong in a lot of these multiple project studios. You're kind of just like, hey, we, we have this game. We sold. Yeah. <laughs> we're, it's we're a different story. Now. It's like, hey, yeah. this game is canceled. Go, yeah, sure, of course. Yeah. Give me a job. But this game is going fine, but this other game is coming out fast. You know, yeah. it's like, it's not like do you, in most cases it's not like do you want to work on it? It's like hey, yeah. you got to work on it. It's like you, fuck, okay, sorry. You right. just gotta, being an employee of a company. That's what it being is. An employee yeah. of a game, you know. Yeah. Uh, quick fun question for you. Besides Valley of the Gods, and I hope I'm saying that game's name right. Is Valve going to release another game in the next three years? Three years? Yeah. Like. Box quality, so You're not, not like underlords, a, not like artifact. I don't consider artifact a box quality game, and I'm not shitting on that game or that team. I simply mean that, like, what I would expect to be like a triple, like a, like a big time title, exactly. or Portal Two, Left 4 Dead, exactly. So box quality. I know game. they're working on VR games, supposedly three VR games. Okay, and okay. besides Valley of the Gods, I, I think they'll pump that out in the next three years. Okay. I, Sure, we'll I think I think that one is coming out. Obviously. Yes, they have to. <laughs> and then um, canceled, <laughs> bought it, canceled it. Yeah. So I don't know what the capacity of their like, like uh, the fact that they're gonna come out with VR games is already like how backwards are you? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. I love the VR space, but yeah. it's not there yet. Who has a VR? And if they're making exclusives for their stupid VR index game uh, thing, oh man, it's like who are you making it for? For your developers? Who's gonna buy your set? Like it's a tough... Facebook have Facebook money, and they're struggling with Oculus. Yeah, it's unless your set is able to simulate my whole body with a suit mm-hmm. and does something spectacular, take it to the next step and close to the matrix. Nerve feelings. Why are you making your own stupid set? You idiots. I mean, they have the deal with Vive, mm-hmm. but this just illustrates the further point. You're so out of touch. You're yeah. so non-competitive that you don't even pay attention to the market. Like to they, me, like why are you making three VR games? Money. I think, uh, this, this is an outsider perspective. I always, I hate to have to always say that, but I do. Yeah. I want to cover my ass because this is the age of dragging if you get anything wrong publicly. Yeah. Um, Valve has the money that they don't have to care about competitive analysis. And I think that that's actually hurting them as a business, as a company that has the prestige that it has. Yeah. They don't actually need to give a shit because like... They have infinite money. Oh my God. To make $4 yeah. billion, and I would imagine they maybe spent $26 million to make the $4 billion. Oh sure, that's a guess. Maybe even less. Yeah, I mean what? I mean they that's, pay. That's, they that's pay the salaries. The we salaries, know that. That's the salaries. But they're the not lights paying for any games coming out. But it, like exactly, yeah. Hawaiian that vacations. year they didn't buy yeah. uh, Campo Santo, so they didn't have to spend fifty billion that or fifty million that year. No, Campo Santo million. is not fifty million. No, I'm just. I was just. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like that wasn't a year that they acquired right. any companies that year. So if it was just running Steam. I just was like being funny by saying they may have spent twenty five million, but they made four point three billion. Yeah. If you have that kind of uh, return on investment, yeah. please. Yeah. Why are you going to waste somebody's time saying this could be risky? Right. We might we might lose six million dollars on this. What is six million dollars to you? I'm just upset with them, man. Yeah. Like uh, we've been in the industry long enough. There's so few companies that has their ability to not have risk. Yeah. And be able to ch- to be in a position to innovate and change and, yeah. and be the front runner, but they just forgot about everything. Here's a great like question. where they came from. Yeah. Do you recall them hiring or losing any C level employees in the last ten years? Oh, uh, like execs. Yeah. Uh, I, they um, you know, the lead writer Doug Lombardi or not? Is it Doug? Let me look that up. Okay. Let me look that. Let's but get like, facts here. so other than game, like, have they brought in or lost a chief? Uh, of operations have they brought in or lost a chief of technology have they brought in or lost anyone doing finance like I can't I can't name one name that has gone in or out 
Well, here, here's a good article right here. Let me look this up real quick. Because I know like a few, like a couple of years ago, there was a lot of high departures. Mm-hmm. Uh, Content creators still though, right? Well, yes. Like not executive managers. Well, I mean like these but guys. But that's why. Yeah, yeah. That goes to your point actually of it being like a Creative predatory. leaving. Creatives going, thinking they want to do stuff. And then execs like staying to kind of monitor. Mm-hmm. But like it's worth noting like you know, Jay Pinkerton, he's one of the lead writers. Laid Low, Wolpaw. These are like original Half-Life dogs man these guys are like Content number creators. 14 of the company yeah and they can literally sit there and just earn millions you know because you know they have a percentage of, of the company right and i'm sure they still have mm-hmm. a, a stake in it but um as creatives you know if you're not creating you get bored fast well and as a developer you have to look at this as like yeah man the og well, creators here, are leading. I, I think that's actually great right so yeah. that's that supports both of our points again which is now money was no problem for them, right? Yeah. So they, there's no reason for them to like stay for money because they're both all those guys that you just named is probably so well off and so taken care of just from their experience at Valve that now they can literally just make a decision based on their own happiness of like, do I want to keep getting this meaningless money, which I don't need more of at this point, or do I want to go out and make? Do I want to have that excitement again like when we made and released Half Life yeah. and Half Life Two? Like if money wasn't a problem for me. I would create so differently than I do right now, but I would definitely be creating. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is worth knowing too, because this is a story that we cracked. Because uh, Kerbal Space Program, on our Game Dev Unchained program, we yeah. didn't even know we cracked that story. Yeah, we didn't they, know. they hired a large part of that team, uh, and uh, they've been around there since 2007. What the fuck have they been working on? Kerbal. Wait, is it 2007 or 17? 2017. 2017, 2017 yeah. right? Yeah. They've been hanging around there. And this is what they do. They gobble up developers that have like huge creative potential mm. and they squash it, mm-hmm. <laughs> fatten them up. I don't get what the point of that is. It's like, give us good games. I think Valve. And they just swallow all the talent. And like, this is what life is when you don't make games. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it takes it, it takes us. A step back. I I know it's it's kind of like really heavy to kind of lay it all on Steam and mm-hmm. Valve's shoulder to say, hey, the industry is suffering. Yeah. What are you doing about it? But fuck, if you're the lead, I feel like there's needs to. If these guys have been in the trenches, they have the opportunity, a platform to kind of like champion game development and really be a model mm-hmm. for all of us and and do great things, and they don't. How rare of an opportunity is that? When we're going to get another Valve or Steam to kind of step up and do something. Yeah. But other than that, they're like destroying any of these like smaller innovative companies mm-hmm. from doing that. Of course, people can argue like, sure, you know, they're giving them more resources. But it's been three fucking years. What have the, the, those guys done? Three VR games that no one's going to play? Uh, hey. What is the data behind this? It's like, uh, hey. VR hasn't been blowing up the way we did. I know we fired the original boss because our original yeah. intuition is kind of correct. But what? let's say we create a new VR set with a lot more wires. Just for fun. <laughs> Just for fun. And you know what? We're going to triple down on this platform. Create three VR games. And no one's going to play it but us. How, what do you guys think? Yeah, this is a great idea. It's like <laughs> idiots. Like this is... Uh, this is where it actually gets dangerous. You know, yeah. we're always trying to champion see uh, game doing. developers, right? And I'm always going to fight for game developers. But there is a there is like a, a our argument to be said that if you give too much power to game developers away from marketing, mm-hmm. it's bad, right? You can't let a room full of creatives just be creative. It's not idiot. It's we're a business. We're an insane business. Yeah. For us to be competitive, we have to continuously look at it as a yeah. business and look at what others are doing and be fucking competitive. That's how we grow, right? This is a situation where a bunch of creatives are so fattened up that they're just doing what they want. It's like three <laughs> VR games, you idiots. <laughs> it's we like, yes, to... I understand VR is fun yeah. to develop for. It's fun to play. I get it. Yeah. But we're not there. And for us to grow and be taken seriously, we got to think bigger than that. Yeah. I think... and it's like, stop, dude. <laughs> this now this is a tough one for me to say but i think in order for vr to actually be a next big thing we need all the platform makers to find some sort of way to actually lessen the amount of competition right now because i think 
we're dealing with a saturation issue yeah. where a lot of people are paralyzed to even jump in yes. because the $600 that they maybe be able to spend on VR, mm -hmm. it's too tough of a decision to have to decide between five, six devices. Yes, well, the index is 600 wrong, plus yeah, a PC. Yeah. It's like you're moving backwards. Yeah. I like what Facebook is trying to do. I, I understand. I like the quest. I think that should be cool. That should be cool, but... It, it, with even with that in place, it takes another five years for them to finally everyone maybe have a headset. Yeah. Lava Nut kind of asked if uh, you think Epic would buy them if they had the chance. No. Would Epic buy Why Valve? Why would Epic buy Valve? There's no reason. Well. They're beating them in the storefront. I mean, they're still far from earning like $4 billion no, sure. a year. I sure. think if Epic bought Valve, what do they inherit other than like a bunch of headaches? Because they're going to try to make all those steam games work inside of their flow yeah. and then they're going to take on those infrastructure costs which may not be advantageous to them at this point right because steam also has like a lot of like 99 cent sh like shitty games. i don't i don't want yeah but you know what i mean just those like shovelware, shovelware game yeah. full full of that right i don't even know if the epic game store team staff is ready to handle to take that, that conversion task yeah. i think it would be unfair uh, I think it would be unreasonable. And I also think that the Epic Game Store is working for them the way that they need right now, yeah. which is they've already made a splash. They're already competitive. And it's the size that they are experience level ready, capable for, right? Yeah. Like they just started doing this. They have a smaller store. Mm -hmm. It's going to grow as they grow. I think that's smart. Uh, I, I would not just buy out Valve. I would just beat Valve. Yeah. I think that yeah, Valve can be McDonald's. Right now, yeah. Do you think anybody who works at Burger King at a C level is not making fat loot? You know what I mean? Right. Like I would, I would concentrate on building Burger King, and I would let McDonald's be McDonald's. Me personally. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm exactly yeah. in the same place. There's no reason for them to buy them up. I don't even think they can afford them, to be honest. Yeah. It, that's a big loss. It's a seeing what they made in one year. I was like, oh man, I cannot <laughs> imagine. Like if. If I was selling a company and you were trying to buy me out of working for this company that just made four billion dollars last year, as in twenty seventeen, exactly, they might even be making more. If I just work another three hundred and sixty five days, my company's going to see another, let's just say, four billion dollars. Yeah. You know how much money you have to put up to get yeah. me to say I'm going to let go of that revenue stream. Yes. yes. You're not just going to buy what I'm worth today. You yeah. also have to buy me out of the next two three years. No, of like it would take a, like a Microsoft a mega corporation. Yeah, it's you. All the Fortnites. Exactly. All the Fortnite Paragon. Yeah, Fortnite's making $100 million Unreal, each month, sure. Gears Maybe of War even money. less now. Every but. dime. <laughs> yes. They're not at that point yeah. where they're in Microsoft. Yeah. Right? They're not there yet. It's an interesting thought. I, 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 I definitely think that Valve is preparing for IPO, but they're shooting themselves in the foot, man. They're not attractive right now. Um, they're losing a lot of ground space mm -hmm. in the storefront, if that's their main thing, right? Mm -hmm. If you're not going to make games, fine. But at least dominate in the storefront, which they are. Mm -hmm. But like they're leaving so much openings. Like everybody's making their own storefront now. Like where are the major games? You're gonna be left with silverware. Dude, Valve should solve their own problem and start a marketing division, like a like an actual branch of Valve that sees the store data and knows what the big winners are, and then start helping devs with let's call it free marketing, right? Like they're like, look. Your game is qualified. We're going to pump some money into marketing your game because we know we get a 30% cut. And that 30% cut is going to bleed into 20, 30, 40 million dollars for us based on projections, but we're only going to spend 6 million in actually marketing it. Yeah. I think Valve actually is in position to do something like that. Yeah. That will help win over developers again because they're like, "Wow, the biggest problem we've had with your platform is getting noticed." And I'm sure you're still going to have a problem getting noticed on the platform for helping getting noticed, but at least it's one tier broken down even further mm -hmm. to make it even that much more of a chance. But you tell the developers it's free marketing from them that they're going to pump money in because they see the data and say, this is a worthwhile investment. Mm -hmm. Man, that will be a huge win for the just the rapport that developers would want to have with Steam and to try to pull some favor back to their company. If I was Steam, I actually would try to set that initiative up like today. Right. They, they just gotta earn somebody's love back. Yeah. <laughs> there, I, I don't, I haven't played a Steam game since Portal Two. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah, you've been out for a while. Portal I've been two. out a long time. I had time. that on PS3. <laughs> like, exactly. Been They've been missing a whole console generation, yeah. in my opinion. Um, when was the last game on a console? Left for Dead. Left for Dead. Maybe 2. Portal. It was two on it's, Portal Two for sure. And then Left for Dead. Left for Dead Two. It was was that console though? Do you remember? It, yeah, it has okay. to be. I think. And Orange Box was in between. Yeah. Okay. 
But yeah, yeah. that's a whole generation of people that know, don't know about Valve. Yeah. And they're becoming more and more niche. And again, when you leave a room full of tech geeks just doing whatever they want to do, it becomes so irrelevant. It's like, you're making what? 3VR? 3? You can't just do one? And give us two regular games? You idiots? <laughs> Is a, <laughs> hey, let's shout out to uh, everyone working at Steam. If you want to help What's us up, understand your company better, <laughs> invite us down. Show us behind show the walls. Us, show so us your can... like sweet snack bars <laughs> and everything else that you're eating. Yeah, this is the Think Snackatron. What is that? Well, just think of any snack and it just appears. <laughs> exactly. I can't imagine them making games down there. I'm yeah. sure the developers are happy, and it, I'm sure it feels like a safe haven where they're allowed to be creative and everything and roll their desk around. Mm -hmm. But there are a benefit. There is a benefit to deadlines and real accountabilities mm -hmm. if projects don't fail. I know a lot of people. We pro kind of, you know, preach against that as the game developer ourselves. It's like, hey, you know, when it's ready, it's ready. Mm -hmm. But there is a huge benefit to actually, like, you know, think of it like a business, man. Yeah. And it's I don't like, think they have any of that pressure over there. You know, you're a sculptor. A Eventually, you chip away. There's no more. There's nothing left to work with, right? So there does come a point where you have to like be done. Yes. The other way around doesn't work because you can just keep adding and adding and adding and bloat, yeah. and bloat and bloat and bloat and just have a career of working on things that no one ever sees. Yes. So, All right. Government. Well, that, that wraps it for Games Recap. Stay on for yeah. Invisible Walls next, but uh, that ends it for me. All right. Well, uh, you know, it's like going back to school to graduate a second time. Consider yourselves recapped. Hell yeah.